Okay, today we are going to finish up module two, uh, talking about shapes. And I'm going to uh, make this a quick lesson today. We're going to only take about 10 minutes if I can keep it uh, to about 10 minutes. Uh, because we're going to have an extra long make day. We're going to be doing a, uh, a drawing of a still life. A still life is um, uh, a... Um, work of art uh, or a, a drawing of something that doesn't move it stay it stands still uh, generally when we think of still lifes we think of bowls of fruit or flowers um, those types of things those are typical subject matters matters for still life and that's what we'll be doing in our make day um, this week and it's about a 35 to 40 minute lesson you know I don't like these to run more than about 50 minutes total uh, for the week so we'll try to get through this one very quickly today last week we left off we made um uh, landscape drawings looking at how we see those geometric and um uh, organic shapes in landscapes we uh, did a drawing this is actually two weeks ago last week we had the uh snow and ice and we did not have an assignment for last week i, I know you all still had a lot to do in other classes uh, I didn't have internet, and so uh, I wasn't able to get stuff posted for you anyway. And I know so many of you all had difficulties. We just don't have an assignment for last week. So we're finished up this week and kind of push us back just a little bit. All right, we're going to be talking uh, today specifically about emphasis and uh, what that means. Uh, we talk about Stella Shape is saying, wow, check out that giant painting of a black circle. Ava says, it sure does grab a viewer's attention. That's for sure. How does the artwork make you feel, Stella? The more I look at it, the more powerful it seems. I feel like I'm sinking into it. The artist emphasized the black circle by placing it on a lighter background and making the circle large. This way, the viewer can see it right away. Yep, that's for sure. I couldn't miss it if I tried. And so when we talk about emphasis, we're talking about how we can make something sort of stand out, uh, how uh, it becomes uh, something we call that focal point, the thing that we want to look at most when we talk about emphasis. At the art gallery, Ava explained that the artist placed emphasis on the black circle to make it the focal point of the artwork, which means a viewer will see it right away. Since we're here, let's explore emphasis in other works of art, too. Sometimes, artists create artworks using very simple elements, like one or two shapes. In comparison, some artists create artworks with all kinds of shapes and lines, which make it tougher to create emphasis. What do you think is emphasized in each of these works? So we're going to closely examine each one and consider what catches our eye first and maybe how did the artist create that emphasis? Oh, well, that's hard to miss. That big black cross. This big plus sign right here. Definitely. And it's used, it's created that same way by having that lighter uh, in the background. And that makes that emphasis kind of stick out a little more. That thing stick out. So this is Boats by Claude Monet. And if we look at what's the area of emphasis... Well, there's a couple things. Really, this or more than anything else, almost becomes the center of attention. And it's these boats, really, that are where our emphasis is. And the boats probably have the most emphasis because they have a little extra detail. Uh, they are in a little, um, um, they're drawn a little crisper, if you will, whereas uh, their lines are, um, are straighter and uh, more well-defined, whereas... The water that the boats are in uh, is made of these sort of bigger, broader strokes that uh, don't have as much definition. And so our eyes are immediately drawn to these. And also because that, or in particular, is different than these other two. These, these kind of match the boat they're in. They don't have a lot of detail. If you look, this boat almost kind of becomes part of the water. But this one, this one really pops out. This is Composition 8 by Kandinsky. Um, 
medium unknown. Huh, I'm guessing probably this one, watercolors or some uh, colored pencil. There, he was a uh, designer, I think, uh, early on in his career. But um, when we look at this, uh, these different areas, and we're talking about this is one of those artists that use all kinds of different shapes. I don't know about you, but boy, this really stands out. Maybe because, again, it's very large. It's probably the largest of all the shapes. Only maybe this triangle, which is sort of uh, very pale in comparison in the background. Maybe this triangle are larger, but it's a very large shape. It's also very dark. It's darker than anything else. Uh, it's really got this other large circle. It's purple inside of it. The only other place we even see that purple is over here. Uh, so this really becomes that area of emphasis. All right. Emphasizing emphasis. Hi, Aiko. Hi, hi, Aiko here. This might be a silly question, but how do artists actually create emphasis in their work? I'm just asking for a friend. Well, there are many different ways that an artist can create, uh, can make an object or subject the main focus of their artwork. To create emphasis, some artists use an element of art known as color. Others might use an element known as space. So by using that choice of color, we're going to look here how Vincent Van Gogh used these bright yellows and these sunflowers to grab the viewer's eyes. And then if you notice the background, he's got this really bright blue. Well, blue and yellow, those colors are real unique to each other. They, they're uh, very... Uh, almost complimentary. This one has a lot of this yellow towards the orange range. And orange and blue are, are complementary colors. They're opposite on the color wheel. And so where this yellow is real bright and warm, and this blue is real cool, um, those provide a lot of contrast. Uh, that means they're very different things right next to each other, which helps create that emphasis. Our eyes really want to look at that yellow. It's really pretty. Oh, I thought there's another one we could look at here. Hold on. Oh, I guess that was the only one. Oh, isolating objects. There it is. Some artists choose to isolate an object in space to create emphasis in their artwork. In this painting, the woman is the only subject, and the portrait is painted onto a black background. So if you look, because she's so bright and the background is so dark, she immediately draws our attention here directly to her face area look how, how light that is even compared to the dark area behind her head here in her shadow area her face really becomes that area of emphasis creating a still life artwork and so this is what we're going to be talking about and what we're going to be doing in our make day this week uh, that's why we're going to keep this short today uh, on our make day i'd like for you to bring a nice sized piece of paper if you want to set up a still life which is a, uh, a you know something that doesn't move or that you're gonna draw. Uh, maybe you want to use coffee mugs your parents have, or maybe you've got a real special stuffed animal that you're gonna uh, set up and draw, or maybe you're going to use, um, you know, something uh, no more than two or three objects, and you really want to consider uh, those simple shapes because we want to look at how we're gonna use those shapes to create that area of emphasis as well. Artists often use different lighter and darker shades of the same color to create emphasis in their artworks. When creating a still life artwork, artists often choose to emphasize one or two objects. Wow, now hold on just one minute. What is a still life? You can't just throw a new vocabulary at me. Uh, art friends, can someone please explain this? An artist creates a still life painting, sketching, or by painting, sketching or, photogra or photographing excuse me, objects that cannot move. In this painting, some colors are light and some are dark. When you look at this piece, you might notice the bright blue object first, which is the main focus of the artwork. So when we look at this still life, we see all this kind of gray in the background. And then so this, this object is sort of that same sort of gray. And the top of this is sort of the same gray. And this sort of area is about the same gray. And this even makes use of some of those same values, those hues, those colors. And then the same value range, the tones, the tints, and the shades. When we add white to a color, we get a tint. When we add black to a color, we get a shade. And so those are all very similar. But all of a sudden, you got this blue here. 
And the blue, because it's very different than everything else, stands out, becomes that area of emphasis. So what do you see? Now that you've learned about a few techniques artists use to create emphasis in their artwork, which techniques do you think were used to create emphasis in this painting? Where do your eyes go first? Well, you know, this figure becomes the what we call the central figure. And it's the central figure because partly because it's in the center, and that's part of why it becomes a central figure. But also, um, the all of the other things sort of surround it. It's, it is surrounded by this sort of negative space. If he's this positive space here, but it's surrounded by this sort of negative space created by the water and the sky. We see over here on the left, there's uh, a, a, you know people and activity going on. And over here on the right, we see some uh, more uh, positive space being created sort of a, to balance what we see going on on the left side of the painting. But our eyes seem to be drawn to him most. And mostly his head, this dark shape here. Again, it's centrally located. It's near the middle of the canvas. He's sort of light, and you get this light to dark contrast against the uh, his uh, skin against this uh, darkness of the uh, water here. So again, that sort of creates that area of emphasis. We have those two very different uh, values, a dark value and a light value next to each other. And so he sort of becomes that that central figure. The, the way it's handled here is a little uh, differently than all the stuff around it. He's got these real crisp lines. If you look in the back, everything's real soft otherwise. I thought there's another one we could look at. Did I go past this? Did I go too fast? Oh, I thought there was another one. Okay. So we're going to uh, talk real quick about what we're going to do this uh uh, week in our studio time, and we are going to be doing this uh, assignment at the very end. Uh, what we're going to be doing is creating a, uh, a still life. Now, I'm going to be using a photograph that I found online of a little picture with some grapes and um, a pear. A simple, uh, just a few uh, simple shapes and only a few simple objects. If you would prefer to draw something you have around your house, you're more than welcome to. Uh, as usual, I'll be using uh, probably Chrome Canvas, I think is what I, I'm using to uh, do that drawing with. And uh, it's going to be, it's about a 35 minute, 38 uh, minute drawing session. So um, if you need to take the whole time, you're more than welcome. But you also don't have to stay the whole time if you finish early. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, I look forward to seeing you. Um, on um, our make day before we leave, we're going to look at our attendance uh, question of the week. And uh, this one is one of my favorite artists. Uh, this guy, uh, let me pull it up here, uh, is uh, incredible. He does something that no other artist, and I, I mean like no other artist can do. Uh, in fact, there are computer programs that kind of uh, do uh, what Chuck Close does. And so Chuck Close is our attendance question answer of the week. <clears throat> and a um, few things about Chuck that I think are, are pretty interesting. First of all, of course, uh, he's an American artist and photographer. He did these huge photorealistic portraits, um, not just of himself, a lot of self-portraits, but he did famous people, he did friends. And what's really neat about the way he worked is um, if you look at this painting, this is how most all of his paintings were done. Um, he breaks his canvas down into these little squares and creates almost a little mosaic of uh, these little tiles where in each of these little squares he paints what we see uh, that look like the little random colors. But when you step away, those colors blend together. And Chuck, better than anyone else, or any artist ever, understands how your eyes blend and see color. So if you look at that baby and if you squint a little bit, it almost looks like a photograph. If you start walking away from your computer, leave it right there on your computer, and you start walking backwards, and you can see it get further and further away, it becomes more, and you see more and more of the detail the further away you get. It's really strange. Uh, it's a beautiful style of art. Chuck Close is our attendance question 
answer of the week. And the last thing before you go today, and I'm going to leave the check close up here just for uh, one more minute while I'm talking. Uh, when we do our make day on um, on Thursday of this week, uh, you have an option uh, to um, um, create in Minecraft. And, and so we're going to talk about that more on the make day. If you would be interested in doing art assignments in Minecraft, the, the still life is probably not going to be one that you're going to uh, have as much fun or be successful doing in Minecraft. But as we go forward, particularly as we look at shape, at color, at line, um, we're going to have the opportunity to work in Minecraft. So I, I only say this so that if you would be interested in eventually participating in an art class in Minecraft at some point, go ahead and get that downloaded and onto your computer. If you need no, uh, help knowing how to do that, send me an email or drop in during the uh, DBA times, those yellow times. And if I'm not in another meeting, uh, I'll be glad to help walk you through it. Guys, have a great day. I look forward to seeing you on the make day. Uh, bring something fun to draw with if you've got something to draw with. And if you don't, uh, be ready to use that Chrome Canvas.